mistaking the moose, the soldier puts his hands on his forehead with the palms facing outward, like a moose's spread antlers. I guess like this. His abuser hits the center of the crossed palms, okay, like this, with his fists or a rifle butt or a stool or whatever else is on hand. A rifle butt? Dude. The task of the moose is to remain standing. Failure to do so will undoubtedly result in even more severe beatings and other punishments. There are various versions of this, such as the suicidal moose, (laughs) where a far off wall is chosen and the conscript is forced to run toward it as fast as possible until their antlers slam into it. If they don't run fast enough, there are more beatings. So bro, these soldiers that they're sending into Ukraine are like soulless war monsters. They're just NPCs. They're NPCs, dude. I did not have sexual relations with that woman. Yes or no? Did you ever take banned substances to enhance your cycling performance? Yes. I had no prior knowledge of the planned assault on Nancy Kerrigan. I am deeply sorry for my irresponsible and selfish behavior I engaged in. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Oops! The Podcast. Julio Gallerati. With my trusty sidekick, Ryan Lynch. Ryan, how are you? Not bad. Happy Thursday, everybody. Hope Happy you guys are all doing fantastic. Thursday. Hope you guys are following your New Year's resolutions through the second week of the year. Agreed. But and a it, lot of people aren't. And and judging by our last episode, hopefully those New Year's resolutions involve, involve the climate, mm-hmm. not your own vain bullshit. Uh, however, I know that most of mine likely include the latter. Yeah. But look, we're a step at a time. Yeah, real quick, happen. kudos to Julio. We record an episode, we talk about climate change, and then within the time frame that we had before recording our next episode, <laughs> we were able to get a uh, climate change activist to come onto the podcast, Thank like you. consecutively, nonstop. Wheels are always turning for this podcast. Uh, so Julio's always doing a great job setting you guys up <laughs> for a successful journey. Um, no, you for the pod. You, it's a good team effort. But that you, was, Lynch. dude, that's like pretty badass. Thank I was you, like, Thank you. you texted me the other night, and you're like, yeah, I got someone. <laughs> and I was like, who is it? And you're like, it's a big, it's fine, it's a big one. It's and a good uh, one. <laughs> yeah, that's that's just how that's just how we roll. So. Well, it's fun, man. Yeah, you know, hopefully thought provoking and interesting content, guys. By the way, tonight I am going to be in Phoenix, Arizona, at the Desert Ridge Improv. There should be some tickets left. I think it's a pretty big room. So uh, please come check me out. That's going to be a really fun show. Tomorrow, Friday night, the 19th, I'm at Mike Drop Comedy in San Diego, California. That's going to be great. And from there, uh, the 1st of February, Stamford, Connecticut. Lynch is going to be there for that show. That's going to be fun. Super pumped for that. He's going to be performing as well. And then the 16th of February, I am at the Den Theater in Chicago. Two shows, taping my special. Those tickets are moving. Uh, So get some while you can while there's still some good ones left. Looking forward to seeing you there. Uh, and it's been a fun ride. So here we go. Rocking and rolling. Back to some silly. Back to some silly boy. <laughs> I made a mistake this morning, dude. I went for a morning infrared sauna session. What is that? So the infrared sauna is different than a traditional sauna in that it heats you from the inside. The infrared is heating you from the inside. So it's supposedly a deeper and more powerful schwitz. Whereas a traditional sauna might be like 200 degrees or whatever, whatever it is. Uh, maybe we can look up what the average is, but like 100, 180, 200, dry heat. You sweat like a pig. It's great. Um, the infrared is not as hot, but it's more powerful and more intense somehow. So I went in there for like a half hour this morning and I, I needed a nap. And alas, I've had an extremely busy day instead. So I don't, and cause some people say that like hitting the infrared or hitting a sauna in the morning will energize them. For me, all this stuff is just starting to do the opposite. If I go to solid core in the morning, I'm, I need a nap. If I go to the sauna in the morning, I need a nap. Mm-hmm. Uh, so learning about my body, learning things. So anyway, f- uh, well, make sure you check out Turbo Fonzarelli. Our buddy Pete Davidson dropped his Netflix special. Um, it's his best one, in my opinion. I think it came out great. It was cool to get to see him put it together. I thought it was fantastic. We closed out sort of his tour, which he's basically been on for the last six months. Uh with four cities. Thank you to everybody who came, had a great time. We were in Carlton, Minnesota, the Black Bear Casino. Then we were at Foxwoods Casino in Connecticut, uh, not far from where I grew up. 
and uh, Ledyard, I believe. Then we were in Medford, Massachusetts for two shows and finally brought it home in Reading, Pennsylvania. So thank you to everybody who came out to the shows. It was really fun. Thanks, Pete, for having me on the tour. I'm sure all the rest of the boys would agree with that, too. It's been a lot of fun all hanging out, all doing it big. And uh, we're all sort of enjoying the gust of Pete's success. Yeah. So, Some cute the... pictures of Julio in the end credits oh, yeah. of, of the special. So stick around for that. Yeah, the end credits of the special Galarati has some some very interesting looks throughout there yeah. uh, from different times in the past, uh, in the past decade plus that we've all been friends. So yeah, pretty cool. Pretty fun. Here we are. We're back, dude. Yeah. I couldn't help but notice our buddy who works for Uber. Remember when we were going on our whole rant, trying to get me hired by Microsoft to make internal content mm-hmm. internal targeted content where I would make $400,000 a year. I this was Microsoft. It was, okay. but it's all, but Uber and Microsoft are both, I don't know where Uber is specifically based, but I know it's the Pacific Northwest. She happens to, I think it's in San Francisco, but she's in Seattle and works for Uber in Seattle. Gotcha. So apparently they have a solid stronghold there. Um, the deal was going to be, Julia was going to work at Microsoft, $400,000 a year to make internal content, which is targeted at raising morale in the workplace. Okay, let's do it. Let's make it happen. The other work descriptions over there seem to make as little sense as that one. So let's do it. So that would be my job. We would also offer Hill Dog a job, 250000 base salary with incentives for more. She thinks this joke's hilarious because it's like, why would I be making more money than her? Because, honey, because. Uh, but anyway, our buddy who works for Uber is currently in Antarctica wow. enjoying a wonderful cruise to kick off the year. Uh, and it just makes me see that. And this person I know from Microsoft is constantly gallivanting. She is all over the world constantly enjoying it, living new life experiences, trying new foods doing new stuff and I want to do it too, Ryan. Do you wish you were her? Maybe, but then I actually don't like, I enjoy doing comedy. I enjoy the comedy grind. I want to make videos uh, and I'm working on some ways to kind of like make that more possible. My Nicaragua videos uh, are coming out soon. So that'll be fun for everybody, but it will be nice, dude. Excited for that. Yeah. You have any trips coming up? Uh, Vic and I just booked a trip to Costa Rica. Fun. We are going the first or second week of March. So we are just booking Airbnbs and we're going to be there for about five days. So we're going to do some excursions. We're going to do some chilling out. Last couple of trips, we went to Europe, a lot of walking, hoping to do a little less of that. So when you say excursions, excursion is very much like a resort term. So I'm wondering, like, are you are you guys sort of like putting these excursions together yourselves or like I know you said you're staying at Airbnbs. Are the Airbnbs set up in a way where there's like some sort of headquarters where you can book little trips with groups like how is that going to work uh i don't know if it's going to be with groups or not but we know the airbnb owner so i think he his management company that watches the property is going to hook us up help you with recommendations and uh our anniversary our eight-year anniversary is going to be while we're down there and they already booked us a reservation oh great what the guy who owns the house says is his favorite restaurant so that's super helpful uh, they're gonna hook it up but no priorities uh coffee and chocolate tour and zip lining Fun, fun, fun. I'm excited for that. Yeah, a little R and R, and maybe some surfing too on those uh, loungy days. So, have I'm you used a blind before? Um, not besides at like an indoor rock climbing. Cool, nice place. Nice. I'm excited for the zip lining. That'd be really fun. Um, and I feel like that's safe. I'm not too nervous about that. I'd be more nervous if we were doing bungee jumping, obviously. But yeah, like yeah. zip lining, I'm not even stressing about it for a second. Yeah, it's yeah, kind yeah. of man. I am. No, it'll be so, great. That's really cool. Yeah, looking forward to that, and then. Uh, yeah, I'm going to go down to Florida. My sister's expecting to have her second baby. Wow. Uh, could be any day now. So knock on wood, hoping for wood. A, uh, a safe delivery. So we'll go, we're going to go check him out once he pops out of the oven. And then uh, we're going to go to Chicago. We're going to see oh, yeah. you taping your special. Colorado, 216. Get tickets, folks. Yeah, then I got you know just a really, really busy 2024. Just trying yeah, to man. hunker down in January. Um, we didn't go out last weekend, nice. uh, so we didn't spend money. So that's nice. going to help pay for all the things that we have coming up. So. so are you guys regimented in that way? We're like making a big change. So like say on Friday, Saturday, you typically do X, Y, Z, but for one weekend you don't do it. Is the amount of money that you can expect to spend on any given weekend so similar that by doing that, you know, the exact tangible amount of money you're likely to save by omitting going out? That's a good question. I'd say no. I think it's just the mindset of just like, you know what? Credit cards not being used this weekend. 
on a on a on particular days of the week when we typically spend a lot of money. Mm -hmm. So just the mindset you think that you're saving money right. and in ways making money by right. saving money, which is like the girl math thing Correct. that they do in Australia, which Correct. Vic and I like to toy around with uh, <laughs> often when deciding purchases. But we did pull trigger on a new console table for oh, our nice. apartment because, um, you know, we're planning on renewing our lease and we like the decor. We have a gallery wall, but there's still some, some parts What's that a are gallery there. Wall? A gallery wall is similar to what you have over here. It is a, except this is more organized. You have about, what, nine uh, photos, seems like the same artist and di same designs mm -hmm. scattered around. We have like a hodgepodge Got of it. wooden Different frame, show. black frame, white frame, photo of Pellegrino, photo of Arizona, Yankee. Uh, Are these real things? Uh, mm -hmm. We have Lil Yachty on our, uh, on our gallery wall. Pellegrino, gallery wall. like San Pellegrino, the water? Yeah, we have a, like, a have, okay. like a French print that we got. No, I wasn't sure if you were making place. like examples generally or if this is specifically what you had. That's no, cool. that'd be a pretty on your feet example. Yeah. But <laughs> yeah, so we have the gallery wall and we got this funky, cool console table. And uh, and, and at this age, you know, you should be striving for, for so many more things to be looking forward to, like the, the baby that's coming. But nothing excites me more than the idea of the vibe yeah. when we start putting knickknacks on that. So that's coming on Friday. It's fun to have a dynamic year planned, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? So you're bo you're bouncing around. It's good. It's exciting. It keeps you young. It keeps you present. Um, and it's nice to be kind of like looking forward to new stuff and making new memories. So uh, that's exciting for you, Lynch. Very good. Costa Rica will get you pretty deep uh, on the path toward, toward your goal of covering new territory. Coming for it, yeah. Will that be your eighth, your seventh or eighth destination? I think number seven. Solid, yeah. solid. Very good. Uh, and I think it's a great place to do it. It's a... Are you guys going to rent a car? Um, I think we're going to be staying close to airport. our Airbnb. Mm -hmm. No, we're flying into, I think, Liberia Airport. Yeah. I think that's what it's called. We're, I forget the name. Nosara. I think Nosara is yeah, the yeah. area that we're staying. Oh, nice. And we're going to just stay local there. And um, yeah, we, ha we haven't planned on it's great. doing a car. If we were doing a longer trip, we would rent a car. I'm, so I was just curious. I'm not suggesting you should. Go in, into the rainforest and stuff, but I don't yeah. think we're going to do that. Well, you can still do that if you set up your trips and stuff through the Airbnb. That's a nice resource. And I'm not suggesting that you should. I'm assuming that your Airbnb is like near the beach. Yeah. That's right. So like you don't need to. I was just, I was just curious. Mm -hmm. um, but that's cool, man. That rules. And yeah, it's a good. I think you guys are going to have a nice time. It's a really special, special place for Thanks, sure. Dude. Um, I have a question for you before this becomes a little too outdated. Michael Che recently came out in response to all the hate that's been going to Joe Coy saying that uh, comedians should boycott hosting these uh, award shows. these award shows. What are your thoughts on that? Like, how do you? Well, what do you think? Interesting. So, I get, uh, I get why he's saying it, and you know, it's a tough job. So you're setting yourself up to be in a position where if things go poorly, which apparently they can just go poorly. Like, I mean, the Golden Globes are known for being the show where like you really rip into the audience. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? It's supposed to be really silly. It's like the sillier one of... Well, yeah, and, and just like, listen, the Academy Awards. somebody made this point and it's a good one. It's like, it's really obnoxious to watch a bunch of rich and famous people give awards to each other. So roasting them levels that out a little bit. So it makes sense to go in there and make fun of all the people, right? That to me, that, that sentiment checks out. I personally like roasting. I've never loved it for myself. Like I get sensitive. Like if someone were to just say something like really cutting about me, like it would hurt my feelings. So I don't want to like roast other people, but look, like if I was at an award show and someone was ripping me, if I'm at that point in my career, I think I could probably handle it. And I get the idea of it. Now the Joe Coy stuff was a little more specific. So I get what Shay is saying. Like, and I don't think it's like a wrong idea. Like he's like, Oh yeah, well comedians are the best hopes and uh, th sorry, the best hosts of this kind of stuff. So if you guys are going to give us so much shit, we're just not going to do it anymore. I do think maybe they were a little hard on Joe Coy. I'd also heard that like the coverage wasn't as good. So like there weren't as many camera angles to see like how people were acting, reacting specifically. So it might've just been like an editing thing where they like found somebody who like wasn't laughing at the moment and it's sort of like built on itself. And then at some point he started like commenting on it, which is I think where I think and where other people think it started to turn because the, the jokes were fine. I thought I think there was like standard, uh, you know, hosting an award show of celebrities jokes, making fun of them, shitting on them, whatever. 
But then at some point he starts calling out the writers, mm-hmm. which is not, which is a little unusual. Yeah, that was kind of like weird. making excuses. There's a way to like barrel through, and I don't know if it would have changed the outcome. I suspect it might. Um, and someone also made the point. I think that he had a little bit longer. I think it was 18 days to prepare. Okay. Look, Joe Coy is a prolific comedian. Like, and at one point I was wondering. I was like, oh, like. Is he, is he not doing well because he's just like doing his act? Like I hadn't watched it. I was just hearing about it. He's just like, oh, my mom's Filipino. I'm like, <laughs> imagine if he was doing that at the award show. Mm-hmm. But look, I I don't know, man. I don't really know. Like I think that it's a risk versus reward thing. It's like if you do a good job, you can really make a name for yourself if you host an award show and do a great job. I don't know if like apparently like people backed out. Like for some reason there was controversy around who was going to host it, right? Do you know I don't know. That? Can you I look it up? Can you look that up? Yeah, I didn't even. They didn't do a. He was a fill-in host. They did not do a good job marketing the Golden Globes. I didn't know it happened until the day after. And I usually, Vic and I will usually tune in for that because we like to see like the Will Smith thing. I watched that live. I was Same, so glad yeah. that I watched that live. I watched it with my old roommate yeah. and. Think I'm right. just I just feel like more a part of it because I watch it live. I love the live television. That's when stuff happens that is unscripted. Right. So we like to watch That's the Golden Globes. Yeah, we yeah. had no idea that it was going on. Okay, Golden Globes. I never watch the Golden Globes. I definitely don't watch the Grammys. The amount of like snubbery that's just like egregious that goes on at the Grammys is just like insane. The Academy Awards seem a little bit more just. It's like the popular good movies are considered blah blah blah. I don't know whatever. But I do not usually watch the Golden Globes personally. We know that we should be saving and investing, but I've always been overwhelmed at the thought, so I just keep putting it off. Even if I started, how would I know if I was doing it right? Which is why I was so excited when Acorns reached out to sponsor today's episode. Today's episode is sponsored by Acorns. Let's go. Acorns helps you automatically save and invest for your future. You don't need a lot of money to get started. You can even start by investing your spare change with roundups. The app even gives you access to education and guidance to learn more about investing. Head to acorns.com slash oops to sign up for Acorns to start saving and investing for your future today. Investing involves risk, including the loss of principal. Please consider your objectives, risk tolerance, and Acorns fees before investing. Acorns Advisors, LLC. Acorns is an SEC-registered investment advisor. Brokerage services are provided to clients of Acorns by Acorn Securities, LLC, member F-I-N-R-A slash S-I-P-C. For more information, visit acorns.com. Great ad, Reed Lynch. Thank you. Well done. I had kind of a funny idea, dude. So one of, one of the videos that I've always kind of wanted to make is this idea where somebody agrees to just go on a trip with me. They don't know where they're going and we film it. Now, it's hard to find the right participant for that because anybody who really wants to go isn't going to be as fun because it won't be as much out of their comfort zone if we go somewhere crazy. Mm -hmm. But anybody who is less kind of interested in travel is not going to want to go because they're going to be like, fuck that. I know what this guy does. Like, I don't want to do that because (laughs) he's going to take me. Who knows? And then it's going to be shitty and scary. And there's a chance that if I got that person to agree... Once we got there, they'd be really mad and it wouldn't even make for a good video. They'd be like, I'm going home right now. And then they'd like leave the country and we wouldn't be friends anymore or something. So that all sucks. But I do think if the stars aligned and I found the perfect person, it would be a really funny and fun video. I think if if you get that person on the latter end, like you sign a contract or... Still, I, you like, like contract you make, that's part not, of it. It's like a jack. Agreed. It's like a jackass bit. Agreed. You got to commit to agreed. the bit. It's a really funny, like, I lost the fantasy football league thing. Yeah. You have to go on a trip with Julio. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, like, for example, like, I don't think you would go. I I think I, I would, since we're speaking behind the scenes, I think it would make for great content. It would. I think it would make for fantastic content. And just for the sake of that, I would go. But every other bone in my body would be like, I don't want to do that. But would, I, would, I would commit to the bit for you. Would your girl be pissed at me and you? Uh, it depends. It depends. Like if we're going to Syria, no, she would be pissed. I don't. I wouldn't want to like that. I would. But this, that's, that, so but that's part of the. That's part you don't of the get thing. To, so yeah, like, I don't, you don't get to dictate that. But like, I don't want to go to Syria. <laughs> I don't. You, yeah, you don't get to make exclusions. Like that's the whole point of the of the gag. Yeah, which makes it fun. Um, um, but I think she'd be cool with it. I think. But you're out. It sounds like. Well, this, I don't. It depends. If we have, if we have like a camera guy, and we have like, if I can like fully be like immersed, 
I don't know if like if I if I if I don't have to do like any like camera work or and things like you that. Don't. If I could really like you don't just be you're just on camera with you. Yeah. Like I would I would do it. Yeah. 100%. But you then so then but what if Syria becomes a very big <laughs> I know, possibility. I'm nervous to go to Syria. I know. Syria. I know. Dude, I know. And I don't think you should want to go and I don't think that I'm not saying that you should be a certain way. You know what I mean? I'm not saying everybody needs to be like me. But I am saying that it would be fun. It would be fun. And it would be funny. And, you know, it obviously it wouldn't be that bad unless it is and then, you know, we'll both be fucking dead. But if we die, like I can't be mad if we die. So like it's just, it is what it is. So I'm tr- I'm trying to find the perfect candidate to do this with. Now, one fun thing about it is that the perfect candidate is not that good at geography necessarily probably. So therefore, you wouldn't know where you're going even if there was some research that you could do because there is no research you could do because there's no itinerary that includes some of these forsaken destinations. So like your end, your, your ticket to where you're going would be separate from wherever your first flight was. So for example, say we went to Syria, me and you would likely fly to, I don't know, Jordan or, or the Dubai first or somewhere that's like easy to get to. And you would have no idea where we're going still. Mm -hmm. I'd have your passport. So if there was some sort of visa, you wouldn't know. And then the final challenge would be to get you on the plane to the final place that we're going without knowing specifically where it is that we're going. So I think that there's a world in this game where the city doesn't necessarily ring a bell still. However, maybe some of these main cities would ring a bell. Like, do you know any cities in Syria? No. Okay, so that's good. Um, That's good for us. I think a good... good, uh sponsorship opportunity for that video would be to have some sort of noise cancellation headphone company. Oh, that's uh, smart. You know, you'd have, let's say it's me, for example. Oh, that's really good. I'd pop those in and then I just wouldn't look like, or I'd hold your hand or like uh, I'd hold onto a rope attached mm-hmm. to your backpack and follow you to wherever the gate is. Mm-hmm. Uh, but like noise cancellation, so you don't hear like, all right, everybody, time to board for our trip too. Yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, I also think it would be really funny. Like the setup to that video is funny. Like, we, the entire audience knows where you're going. I know where you're going. You don't know where you're going. And we're doing kind of like pre- pre-trip planning. So like they're interviewing you about it and you don't know where the fuck you're going. And that's oh, so funny. And we show reasons as to why this is going to be a big, uh, big learning curve for you. Mm-hmm. You know, we learned that you've only been, you've gone to the Bahamas 19 times. And I, dude, sure? I would love to, I'd love to, <laughs> dude, I, I, I want to nominate myself. I think I'd be fantastic to be your person to go with, but just not Syria. <laughs> yeah, I know, but we could go, who knows? And listen, dude, I'm not, now I'm not just I'm because. I'm such a novice. Because I, you're saying Syria and look, dude, you're not a novice. I think you represent the, the like the more normal take on this subject. Where still novice though. You're, you're, dude, you just traveled all over Europe. You're going to Costa Rica. You've been all over the place at this point. So you're not a novice. This is just a crazy thing uh, that you would be funny in, potentially. I think I'd freak out multiple times. It would be a great bonding experience for us. It would. So my manager, Zach, has agreed to do it, but I think he's full of shit. I think he's just like trying to make me happy. Uh, but he said he would do it. He would also be funny. Uh huh. But I also think you would be better because I think that you'd be able to sort of like function despite the fact that you were scared. Whereas he would just be like pissed off and be like, bro, fuck this. Like, uh, he's, I mean, I mean, I'm never, that's what he would do. Yeah. Uh, that's a, that's such a great concept. You've been, you've had, you've I been like this thinking one. about that one for a while, right? I have. Yeah. No pressure. Yeah. If, I would, I would do it. You do it. I think I'd do it. Yeah. Cause I, I think that would make, that would make for such great content. Yeah. And like, I just, I know the kind of person that I am and like, that makes me so uncomfortable, but like, Especially if I'm not like doing anything, if I'm just being me, like I and like now I'm like I'm not even gonna like try to like act any other way than the way that I would actually be feeling if we did that, which would be really nervous and scared. But I also trust you, and it would be interesting. Mm. It'd be interesting, yeah. Okay, so would your parents be pissed at me? No. 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 Okay, that's good. Um, okay, so yeah, and look, dude, think about it. You, you've no, got no, no. Other suitors this stuff. is great. This I didn't mean to like back you into a corner here. <laughs> Uh, you don't have to do this and you know, I'm far off from planning any sort of video, but it would be a great tie in for the pod. I think so too. It would be great content. Um, and we make some fun name for it where it's like Lynch and it's dude, what a fun thing. And yeah, you will have no 
uh, back end commitment either, which is nice. Yeah. No, you don't have to edit. You don't have to shoot. You don't have to do shit. It's uh, a, it's a genius. It's a genius concept. It's fun. So no matter whether it's me or someone else, you, you need to do it. And it's better. If, I, I like it better than Idiot Abroad. Idiot Abroad is maybe the funniest travel show that's ever been made. What's that? Uh, Ricky Gervais and his writing partner, Steven, whatever his name is, uh, they had this producer of their radio show or something who's this guy who's just like really funny and just wasn't interested in traveling at all. So the show is they make him go places. Now the places they make him go are some of like the world's most treasured destinations. And he goes and just has these really funny takes about these places that he's going that he doesn't want to be in. And they put him in uncomfortable situations. They send him to the Great Wall of China. They send him to Rio de Janeiro, I think, to see the Cristo and all that shit. They send him in all these spots. And seeing this guy in the wild is so funny. But these destinations that he's going to, he knows where he's going. They're, they're popular destinations. So while it is a fun show, there's also something fun to me about this idea of taking someone somewhere that's out of their comfort zone and we i think the beautiful thing about it the desired outcome is that we all see that it's not that bad from a person who we believe which is you Mm -hmm. not me to me like all right he's crazy like oh yeah no he he actually made it seem kind of but still i'm crazy whereas you don't know where you're going that's fun to me dude that's 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 fun i know i know it'll be a fantastic final product it's really fun. Like that. Me. Like if if you were the director, I would uh, just like the same way that Emma Stone gave herself up for poor things. Mm. I would give myself up to you. I hope you're sweating a little bit. Right I now. am, dude. I'm I'm always sweating when we're recording the podcast. <laughs> Sometimes I'm always just I'm just nervous all the time. This is um, fun. This is fun. But uh, Stephen Merchant is the, Merchant. Uh, the partner with uh, Gervais for that show. What I a check show! That out. Yeah. What a show! Oh I love God. Gervais. He's very, he's very cunning. The best travel shows that exist. There's three of them. I'm going to loop one in that isn't a travel show, but it like kind of is. And you'll see because he like travels around to do it. But number one, that one, Idiot Abroad in no specific order. Second one is the Will Smith Disney Plus show. I forget what it's called. It's amazing. The third one is the Chris Hemsworth Disney Plus show, both directed by Darren Aronofsky. They're so good. It's like a visual masterpiece. Like great, great shows. To wrap up this production movie uh, conversation that, that we opened the show with I have to recommend the New Emma Stone movie Poor Things You loved it I think it's going to I don't. We don't have the list of Who's going to win Best Picture I hope it wins Best Picture She deserves another Oscar It was One of the funniest Most Eerie Silly Weird Graphic Gory Horny movies That I've ever seen It was truly What unique. else did she win for? La La Land Oh, yeah. Which surprised me because when I saw it in 2016, I was like, greatest movie of all time. And then I haven't thought about it or have seen it since. And I was surprised that she won an Oscar for that performance. But I got to go back and watch it because mm. I know that she killed it when she got the award. Obviously, right. cause she got an Oscar. Emma Stone is the best. Mm. Dude, she, Emma Stone is what Lindsay Lohan was supposed to be, in my opinion. Interesting. I just think she kicks ass. Every role that she that she takes, she she kills they it. They look similar enough uh, that that's a very interesting comparison. Yeah. Emma Stone, Willem Dafoe, no Jesse Plemons, um, Mark Ruffalo, and Rami. I know we, we talked about it, I think, maybe a couple episodes ago, but since then I've seen it. And uh, it was one of the better movie theater experiences that I had. Sick, um, I, I highly it recommend it. Super weird. It's going to get nominated for stuff? I think so. And don't see it with any family members either. There's probably, four, if you compile all the sex scenes, there's probably 14 minutes of raw sex. <laughs> raw, horny Raw, real sex. sex. It's real. Um, it was it was it was fantastic. It it kind of gave me the same feelings that I had when I watched La La Land, which could be lame, but I just felt I walked out of the theater happy, excited, and optimistic. That's a nice feeling. Optimistic for the world because it was such a it was such a perfect film. The story was so unique, and uh, I can't compare it to anything. I highly recommend seeing that in theaters. It was sick. Sick, dude. Yeah, go check that out. Um, yeah, I definitely gotta watch that. Now I'm excited to watch it after hearing that nice review. <laughs> I was reading an article about Russian military hazing, okay. which is apparently like brutal. Like picture frat hazing times a million. Like this what is. What do they do? So here, let me see. <laughs> so, so this is a quote from this foreign par- policy article I was reading. Uh, the survivors of, of this hazing say the main goal is to break young men. 
They are turned into submissive, intimidated, and obedient drones who will not ask unnecessary questions, no sure, nor show any independent thought or initiative. Wow. The methods are brutal. <laughs> Take punching the plywood. Used as a so-called toughness training exercise and also as a form of collective punishment. Service members stand in a formation in a single line at attention. An authority figure passing by the formation hits each of the standing service members in the chest with the butt of an AKM assault rifle. And apparently do this repeatedly until the gun jerks in some way. But soldiers who have been through it say that this leaves your chest black and bruised for at least a week. Yeah. <laughs> what about this one? Then there is staking the moose. Oh, <laughs> this is like medieval torture, right? Staking the moose, especially prominent in the Russian air force. The soldier puts his hands on his forehead with the palms facing outward like a moose's spread antlers. I guess like this, his abuser hits the center of the crossed palms. Okay. Like this with his fists or a rifle, butt, or a stool or whatever else a is rifle on hand. Butt? Dude, the task of the moose is to remain standing. Failure to do so will undoubtedly result in even more severe beatings and other punishments. There are various versions of this, such as the suicidal moose, <laughs> where a far off wall is chosen and the conscript is forced to run toward it as fast as possible until their antlers slam into it. If they don't run fast enough, there are more beatings. Bro, how crazy is this? Can you imagine... Dude. So, bro, these soldiers that they're sending into Ukraine are like soulless war monsters. They're just who've been NPCs. Broken. They're NPCs, dude. Dude, it's crazy. I, if I, I would, I would flinch at the first like butt of a gun to my face, and I would just, I would just say, I'll do whatever you want. I'll do whatever you want. Like, people, don't hit me. People kill themselves. I bet. I couldn't, dude. I like the the submissive thing like that is probably the best way to describe me normally so like I just would behave I would do whatever they say when I sign up I don't want to go through any of that you don't need to break me I'm already broken like just right. I'll do whatever you want me to do if if I'm in the circumstances where I'm joining the Russian military just like I'll <laughs> do it like don't hurt me I think running into draft, the wall dude. like this bro can you imagine I uh, believe there's a draft I we have to look this up is yeah. there a here, you look that up. I'll, I'll read this thing. So there's a term for what we're talking about. I don't know how to pronounce it. It's Dedovshina. I saw something. that when I Googled this. I have no idea. Is the informal practice of hazing and abuse of your junior conscripts historically in the Soviet armed forces and today in the Russian armed forces. Uh, so that's interesting. So this has a sort of Soviet Union legacy that has been carried over into today. One thing I found last fall, Putin called up 130,000 reserves conscripts for military service and he increased the la the he increased the age limit uh, from 27 to 30. And from one Google search, a couple sources, it seems in the USA after you turn 26 um, you don't need to enter the draft anymore. You're no longer eligible to be drafted. So well, that's grateful. crazy that you still are technically eligible. No, I'm not. Not you. I'm saying in general. Oh. People are. <laughs> so I so quickly was like, I'm no, not, I'm not. No, I'm, I'm not. 27. <laughs> uh, Turning 28 this year. <laughs> Dude, scary stuff. Um, yeah, I don't know what the deal is with the Russian. I don't, situation. I don't like the, the physical pain. Have you ever been punched in the face before? Yes. What have was you? No. It, 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 yeah, I have it's, it's funny. You know, I was I, when it's happened to me, I was like not sober. Uh -huh. Surprise, surprise. Uh, I've told this story before on the pod, but I got punched in the face by a security guard at a bar. Uppercut it. And this was a huge dude. He had like a moment. I I taunted him, uh -huh. but it wasn't my fault, bro. Taunting someone doesn't deserve a beating, bro. Okay. Body like, bodyguards kick, get away with kick murder. me out, dude. Why'd you beat the shit out of me? You know yeah. I mean? Then the guy quit his job and threatened to find me. So I didn't press charges, which was a mistake <laughs> in retrospect. But I also shouldn't have been talking shit, dude. We were all wrong that night. Yeah. But uh, it hurts, but you don't like feel it while it's happening sometimes. It's like, I mean, it's only like literally only happened to me that one time. Not uh -huh. good. Uh, but yeah, it's almost like you go into shock or something. But not being sober probably made it less painful. Mm -hmm. But of course, later it's painful. I had a black eye and shit. Yeah. I'm fucked up. <laughs> well, how old were you? In your 20s? I must have been 23. Yeah, you know, 23 or 24. Pretty young, ultimately. I've definitely deserved a black eye in my day. Like, going out <laughs> in New Haven, Connecticut, just, you know, like... Being a douche. 
yeah, being a douche. <laughs> I'm with my I'm with my group of equally sized friends who also have no part in being assholes. But like, but what were you guys doing? Just being loud? Just taunting at they're at Toad's Place, which is a club in New Haven. Uh, awesome concert venue back in the day, dude. Amazing. Like everyone, everyone's who you seen perform there? there. No one. But that's where that's where we go out. <laughs> you didn't go to see live music there. You no, just go out. I almost went to see Yachty in 2017, but thirty dollars was too much money at the uh, time on yeah. Wednesday night. The but panel. anyway, um, I, I would go on the stage and I would uh, conduct. I thought that was like a fun and fun horny thing. way to like meet people, and ev- everyone loves being pointed to and conducted mm. during like an EDM bass drop. Um, but I would just like point at like guys that are much bigger than me and just be like, oh. And like, really, I, I've deserved, I've deserved a, a punch, a, a curb stomp, anything, uh, for for a while. A I was able to stomp. escape college without any of that, really. Yes. So yeah, I don't know, but good. I'm just, I just, just goes to show, like, I could not handle any of that hazing. Mm. I didn't go through anything like that for my fraternity hazing. Dude, like, yeah, fuck, dude, nobody can not handle even, that, not bro. even, not even a seventh of a percentage yeah of, nobody should of anything like that nobody is capable of tolerating being tortured okay like maybe you're taught you maybe you're capable of like not snitching but like nobody can just like take torture and be like this is fine that is literally torture what they're describing mm-hmm. that's not like frat hazing where you have to eat a bunch of honey or something you know what i mean mm-hmm. or you have to blow your boy yeah you know this is worse than all of that yeah. <laughs> getting beaten to death basically yeah. I think people die from the beatings sometimes too. I bet. I mean, what they black and blue on the chest for a week. Yeah, the butt of a gun. But there, these are only like the tip of the iceberg of the techniques. I bet there's like. Can you imagine? Deeper, darker. Break somebody's whatever. Yeah. Break your chest. I couldn't. Grateful that um, live in a world where I I haven't been drafted and just uh, yeah. Dude, I saw my first concert at at Toad's place. Really? Who'd you see? Bone Thugs and Harmony. Ooh. Must have been two thousand and two. I saw Kanye West at Toad's Place. Really? Yep. 2003. John Legend opened for him. This is like a wild, like parallel universe. You could smoke inside. Some dude put a cigarette out of my arm, I huh. think on purpose. Uh, and it was pretty crowded. Like all, so all falls down had just come out. Uh, and it was a really fun show. That's awesome. Uh, yeah. Kanye with the Louis backpack. Like, dude, I saw a lot of good shows there. Yeah. It is a great, it's a legendary venue. It's still there, right? Yeah, it's still there. It's still it, like uh, when I went to Quinnipiac, it it's no longer like a major concert venue. Every weekend, oh, interesting. Um, they have concerts during the week and stuff. I right. also think I, I heard a rumor that they serve mass on Sundays at Toad's what? Place. Yeah, um, that's, that's insane, more likely yeah, true than not. And um, yeah, Saturday nights it was just a nightclub. It was the nightclub, um, and uh, yeah, I went there every single week. So you guys would go out in New Haven. Yeah, a lot. Nice. I, when I was in high school, I went out in New Haven a couple of times. There was like 18 and over clubs. Is that like still a thing? I maybe did that once or twice. Mm, I'm not sure. It was weird. And then, and then like, so you'd have like a wristband if you were underage or something. I forget exactly how they did it. Or yeah. if, no, if you were of age, you got a wristband. Yep. And then I had this like girlfriend who was in college when I was in high school. I would like sneak down to visit her. Mm. Didn't last long. She was like a woman and I was still a boy, dude. I couldn't quite hack it. Mm. Uh, we, so, dude, we had an email from somebody asking me about something. They're like, did I see Julio in a The General commercial? And when I heard that, I was like, have you seen it recently? Because that's good news for me because that means it's running again. And I don't think so. Somehow this person just, like, I think remembered. And they were asking me to tell the story of that. To be honest, there's not the story isn't that interesting. I mean, there's, like, a formal process for how somebody gets a job like that. Like, there's commercial auditions. You audition for it. You do something... Pretty straightforward because you've seen these commercials. They're 10 seconds long, 30 seconds. You're not doing anything that significant. So it's like, it's a crapshoot. At some point, you may be able to stand out for whatever reason you get cast. But it's not like, it's unlikely to be getting cast all the time unless you like fit a specific type of profile, which makes you great for commercials. Okay. So anyway, let's say I audition for 50 commercials. Maybe I'll get one. That's been sort of like the trajectory over the years. So I got this one. I got it during the pandemic. I booked like back to back Zoom commercials over Zoom, which I was like, oh, this is interesting. Like maybe I audition well on Zoom for some reason. Whatever. I get this commercial. It was pretty straightforward. We shot it in Atlanta. It's me in a closet. And the guy opens the closet because he's moved my desk into the closet. And there's a couple of jokes. I don't even remember what was said. But I do remember that we did like 40 takes. And I got to kind of just like make up a bunch of them. They like kind of people with improv skills for some of these commercials because they sometimes want you to think of your own shit. And if you think of something funnier than the writers, then they use it. So I got to do a bunch of stuff, uh, but that was pretty much it. It's not that exciting of a story. 
but always exciting to book something like that. It's very exciting to be cast in something because someone had to pick you. Getting picked is so fun. You know, making your own thing and having it do well is, is amazing too. But there's something so exciting about getting picked. And I think maybe that's like from growing up, like this culture of like stardom and getting discovered. So if you book a job, if you audition and you audition again and you jump through hoops and you finally get it, there's something really fun and exciting about that that makes it feel more fun than if your boy just calls you and is like, hey, you want to be in this? And you're like, yeah, sure. That's still unbelievable. And ultimately that's better. You don't have to jump through hoops. Mm -hmm. You want to be in a place where your boy is calling you. That's a much better situation. But it's still very rewarding to get yeah. cast. So, Did you... Did you do theater in middle school and high school? Because I know you play a lot of tennis. Do you have time to do both? Yeah, I did. Like, sort of, dude. I did, like, the high school. I did, like, the middle school play. I did plays as a kid at, like, the lo this, like, local community theater. Uh -huh. And then in high school, I was in, like, a drama class, but I didn't do plays because I was doing sports. And then in college, I, like, didn't do anything performance-wise. performance, performance -wise. I did tennis, and then, like, I was trying to, like, get a job where mm -hmm. I made a bunch of money. That was the goal. <laughs> I was a couple episodes ago. I asked like, how do you like prepare before going on stage? Like what your routine is like mm -hmm. when you're doing, uh, you know, like the, uh, the manscaped ad, for oh. example, getting into character. What is like, is that a thing? Like, do you like, do you like have like a, a process for that? Or is it kind of just like, let me do my accent and let's read the, let's memorize the script or is there more to it? Like, what do you, like, what's the psychology behind you getting ready for that's a fun lights, question. camera, action? That's a fun question. So it's different for every project. If it's a commercial, there's usually not much of a script, but because of that, there's an opportunity for you to like add stuff and be funny. So at some point I'm like wrapping my head around what these scenes are and what kind of funny shit I can throw in to make it funny. Now in that, the case of that one, like a lot of the writers who work on some of Pete's other stuff were there meaning like guys who've written, wrote on Bupkis, like guys who are like funny comedy writer guys. And maybe they'll toss me some lines. I'll do them. As far as like the character stuff goes, uh, you know, I decide how I'm going to do it. The we'll talk about whoever's in charge. We kind of agree on what it's going to be and then try it and try it in different, le different levels of severity. So like I'll try it when I'm doing it really intense and then I'll do them when I'm doing it like a little more subtle or whatever. So I'm like doing it all. And then they kind of get to pick. But if there is some sort of the only way I would be in a situation where I'm like really preparing. And I used to be more of like artsy fartsy about this when I was younger, where I'd like really want to prepare. And I'd go in like, dude, I did this once. This was so stupid. I yes. auditioned for I auditioned for a role for some pilot or something in L.A. And after they wanted to do a general meeting with me, which is like sort of uncommon, but I don't know. So usually it's like one or the other. You have a general meeting with the studio. And I, I assume they're still doing these, but like this was what you did back then. You go in for pilot season, you go meet the casting person at, M at ABC, NBC, whatever. They ask you a bunch of questions, whatever, you leave, and then supposedly they're going to call you in for stuff during pilot season. They may or may not. So one time I auditioned for this part, I was like this really nerdy character, right? So I decided I was going to get really in character and go be this nerd and do it. So to add to the, I thought it would add to the performance. If I was behaving like this person the whole day, I was taking a lot of acting class at the time. So I show up and they want to do this general meeting with me before. So I stay in character for the general meeting and I'm saying all this stuff and who knows if they realized what I was doing or not. It was kind of before Instagram. So there wouldn't have been really a way for them to like look me up mm -hmm. and see what I was really like. Maybe they had some, some stand-up videos on YouTube. I don't think that they were going to do that. And I was kind of like talking a certain way, being nerdy. And then I like started saying, I started telling like stories that weren't real. That like I was getting bullied in comedy. It was, dude, I, I, don't, I don't know. It, to, all that I get take from that is that was a stupid decision. Like there's no reason that I couldn't have just snapped into that character when the camera started rolling and then just been myself easy to say now and I know that there's some sort of like romance to the idea of somebody being in character forever but the reality of that is not as appealing as it sounds like I bet you it's super fucking annoying that Daniel Day-Lewis is walking around as Abraham Lincoln all day mm -hmm. he's a method I mean? actor right he stays yeah. in the whole way through and I've even heard like I know this for a fact and I don't want to like air anybody out but like I know I've heard stories from offspring of people who have acted with Daniel Day Lewis who like got annoyed and told him to fuck off. Oh wow. <laughs> like, dude, shut the fuck up. You know what I mean? So look, 
acting is a, certainly like a craft and an art form and whatever. But I, I typically feel that, you know, there's no need to be extreme with the preparation when it comes to getting into character, in my personal opinion. I'm sure it works for some people. And maybe there's a, a part that would be so challenging for me, right? But think about it this way. I'm never going to get that part unless I'm a movie star. Because if it's a less important role, they're just going to pick the person who's right for the role. No one cares that I get into character to be Henry Ford if I'm the seventh most important person in that movie. Mm -hmm. If they're like, we're going to do the Henry Ford movie. Julio is the big star. He's attached. We're going to make him Henry Ford. And for the next seven months, I hang out with Henry Ford's kids, grandkids. And I, I, I assemble a Model T in my garage. And I start looking like him and talking like him to make some stupid biopic that sucks. But I do. <laughs> but that's what I do, right? Yeah, yeah. That's what I do. And it's a sexy story. I go on entertainment tonight and I'm like, you know, funny story. One night uh, I couldn't find my keys to the Model T. I had become so into the role that I actually started to become scatterbrained the way that Henry would have become. You know what I mean? And now everybody thinks that's such a crazy story and we're all excited. Not to sound like a cynical prick, but I do think that there are great actors who don't need to do that. And maybe it really works for some people or whatever. But uh, yeah, man, it's, it doesn't seem like it, it, it's worth it <laughs> or yeah. that, it, that you need to be doing that. The chances are, like if I'm getting an audition to begin with, it's going to be something that they think that I'm right for. And I'm not some like amazing character actor. Like, I don't even know how somebody gets that reputation. You know what I mean? It almost seems as if you need to get to a certain level before they're like, ooh, this guy's a shapeshifter. He's amazing. Gary Oldman. Gary Oldman can be anything. We'll make him this. We'll make him that. Like being a person who's a an emerging actor, which I wouldn't even know if I would call myself that, if I would call myself that at this point. Like I'm more of a comedian. I'm not like auditioning for movies constantly, dramas and shit. You know what I mean? Like I'm auditioning for the stuff that I'm right for at this point, which means that it's probably not a massive departure from what I'm already like. So there's no reason in that scenario that it makes sense for me to manufacture something that isn't what I'm already like, in my opinion. So it's easier for me to just be like, all right, I'm going to be as close to myself as possible here and do this if it makes sense. If it calls for stretching that or changing that, sure. But the audition process is so unsure that to me, it doesn't make sense to spend so much time preparing for an audition that you might not get. Mm. I get the romance, the romance behind wanting to do that. But to me, it just doesn't make sense. In interesting. Because you, you've talked a lot about uh, the commercials and the stories of the ones that you've done in the past, but we haven't heard about like yeah, how you prep for that. So I've had that question banked for a little bit. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, That's well, dude, listen, dude. I'm sure that in this entire episode, I just sound like a bitter actor who never made it. I don't think so Which is all. true, bro. <laughs> and thank you for saying that I don't sound that and way. I mean that. I really mean that. I'm not just Thanks. saying that to. What, what's the phrase thank when you, you just say things to appease? Appeasing, maybe. Appeasing. I don't know. I don't, no, I don't think no, that you came off that way at all. I know what you mean. But yeah, dude, thank you. I appreciate yeah. it. But at the, the end of the day, th it is just true. I am a failed actor. <laughs> and I am no longer sort of like pursuing it as like aggressively as I used to. But. I, when I first started, I was like, maybe I'll be able to like be a big actor and stuff. And like, I could be a movie star or whatever. You know what I mean? Which, which pertains perfectly to me being like, oh, movie stars. Huh? You know what I mean? It's like a perfect tie in mm, full circle to that. Yeah. I'm like, oh, like I've rejected it now is the thing. I'm ha You can tell that I'm happy that it's less of a thing as it used to be. And probably some of that stems from my being upset at the fact that it like didn't work out for me <laughs> the way that I thought it would, or I hoped it would. But look. So at the time, right, I really want to be an actor. I really want to break through. I'm doing things that are going to maybe give me a chance of standing out among, amidst a sea of talent. And, you know, I, who knows, dude? Who knows? Like, uh, you just never know with this business, like where you're going to end up and what you're going to do. But I tried my best. The story isn't fully over, but uh, it, it, I look back on it to some degree as a waste of time. Really? All, all the preparing. A little bit. I'm like, I could have just spent way less time on this and had the same result. And not only had the same result, and someone could be like, all right, well, all that preparation probably showed. Like you, you worked really hard on this stuff. You made great choices as these characters you came up with or whatever. And there, there's value to that. I'm arguing that there was not. 
Mm. <laughs> yeah, but you can't say uh, you shouldn't have done it because then you don't know what would have happened if yeah, you didn't yes. do it. I'm happy with where I ended up and I love the idea of acting still. So I just want to say that. like, This isn't me saying that acting is stupid or worthless or outdated or like, I don't think any of that. And if somebody wanted me to audition for something, I would do it. And if someone was like, you should act, I would do it. I'd love to. I'm happy and excited about the idea of doing it. I'm just like not as excited or interested in it as I used to be, basically. Hmm. And part of that might be from being worn down. But I also just like what I'm working on now. I like unscripted stuff. I like being myself. It ties in nicely with my business. I come in here, I talk shit. I make videos on myself. I go do stand-up on myself. I love all that tie-in. You know what I mean? That to me is a nice synergy. Um, so, you know, whatever. We'll see how it ends up turning out. There's something to uh, trying less in Hollywood, in my opinion. There's something to a person who is confidently approaching something like this in a way where it seems like he's prepared less because he doesn't need to prepare as much. Does that make sense? I get that. I get the confidence Not seeming side of desperate, it. not seeming like you need it, not going in that room being like, hi everyone, I'm so excited. Thank you so much for calling me in. Colin, I just want to say I'm a big fan of you. Some like random guy in the corner, whatever. You know what I mean? The cool guy who walks in and is like, which one is this again? That guy gets it a lot of the time. There's something to that. I never believed in that. I was always like, that's bullshit. You need to be prepared. It's not cringe to be prepared. You can be cool and confident without acting like you're too good for it. It doesn't have to be like a, they want to fuck the unfuckable guy thing, right? But I will say this. I had an audition for this show called Forever. Uh, it, I think it did 20 something episodes, network television, big money job. I fly out to LA. I'm, t I'm testing. This is like the final step before you're going to get cast in a show. You've auditioned, they like you, you go. And now you and two or three other people are going to go and read for the same part. You do it for the producers, you do it for the director, whatever, then you do it for the network. Something something like that. Are only you doing it in front of each other? Only done once right? No, but we're all sitting there with each other. Okay. I'm sitting there with uh, this actress. I'll never forget this. I think her, her name was Alana De La Garza or something. Big TV actor. She's sitting there waiting to go. This other guy walks in, this guy named Utkarsh. He's like a Hollywood guy. This guy Utkarsh. Look him up. I think it's U-T-K-A-R-S-H. He's been in a bunch of shit. I think he makes music. Uh, he shows up, okay? We're auditioning. Yeah, there he is. We're auditioning for this part of a some sort of nurse in the show. I forget exactly what it was about, but Judd Hirsch is in this show. So the guy from Grandma's Boy who plays the robot, I think his name's Joel David Moore. He ends up getting the, the, the role. But this dude, when you, when you test for a TV show, you sign your contract. So... I'm looking at my thing. I'm going to get paid $30,000 an episode, which is low. Now do the math. It ended up doing, this is a pilot still, but that show got picked up and did 20 episodes. So how much is that? $600,000? Mm -hmm. Like, dude, I'm, I have, I'm broke. So this is, I'm signing this contract. I'm like, holy shit. This guy Utkarsh walks in. He goes, which, he's like, oh shit. He goes, which one is this again? Meaning he'd been testing for so many TV shows that he legitimately didn't know. At the time, I'm like, is this guy trying to psych me out? I was like, is he like fucking with me to try to like get me off my game? He wasn't. I think this guy was that busy during pilot season that he had no idea what show we were even testing for. So it was going to be me, him, and one other guy. We're all going to test. They're going to pick one of us, right? So I am sitting there wearing scrubs. It was the role of a nurse. I'm sitting there wearing scrubs, which I think that actors in, in Hollywood or whatever would say that that was a, was a cringe decision. You showed up in scrubs? I showed up wearing the, the outfit character? for the character. Okay. which was like overkill. Two people made comments about it and they were very LA comments where it was like, they seemed positive, but there was like shade on the back end of it. Like, I, I think somebody was like, Oh wow. Like you're really like going for it. Like, wow, well, I, I should do that. I, maybe I should do that. Like, like there was just surprise about that. And even the casting people to me, it seemed like I was trying too hard, but it didn't matter because I didn't even get to the final testing stage because what, what happened that day? One of the guys never showed up. I forget what happened. He was maybe being considered for something else. And our boy Utkarsh got cast in another pilot before the day was over. So now I was, so he wasn't fucking around. This guy was just killing it that hard. So here I am. I'm the last guy. Nobody wants to see one person test. You need to have multiple people. And because those two people, two people dropped out in the same day, the test just didn't happen. And then I just didn't get it. So then they did they another tested test for new pool with people. other people. Yep. Just cause scheduling. Just cause nobody else was there. And it happened that day. So that, that's like the kiss of death. 
somebody was telling me. I don't understand how this stuff works, to be honest. And I never really was like that deep in it. But at the time, dude, I didn't even understand what my goals were. I thought I was like, I need to, I need to go on more auditions if I'm going to be an actor, if I'm going to get stuff. Right. So my agent at the time was sending me on a lot of stuff, but it wasn't like I, I was talking to people who lived in LA who were auditioning three times a week for stuff. So I started getting pissed. I'm like, why am I not going for more stuff? You know what I mean? But it didn't make sense in retrospect. Like I don't, now I wouldn't want to audition for this wide range of stuff. I just really was interested in being a working actor for whatever reason. And I wasn't thinking about certain things that go along with that. Like as a comedian, I had a, an advantage. I could make my own stuff for myself. I could be in these comedic roles and it would make sense. So the fact that I was only going out for comedies, that should be what I want. I want to be in primetime dramas where I have to cry every episode and it's some stupid show. Like, I don't want to do that. But at the time I thought I did. You know what I mean? I didn't understand my big picture the way that I do now. And I'm sure 10 years from now, I'll look back on whatever I was thinking now and be like, that was stupid. That made no sense. So maybe part of it just evolves with time, but I was really obsessed with trying to be an actor and I was in some stuff, but I don't know. I'm not as interested in it as I used to be. Interesting. Having said that, Please cast me in shit. And if my agent today sent me something, I'd be so excited and I'd work a bunch on it to prepare. But still taking into account some of the things that I have said here on the show. Interesting. So it's- sorry that this these last couple of episodes of me and you have just turned into like deep dives into my pe- past as trying to make it as an entertainer. No, you don't need to say sorry. I'm asking you these because I'm genuinely curious. Well, hopefully I it's hope, helpful for you. I hope for that's your, your path. Well, yeah, I'm asking out of that. I also think that, you know, just... Everyone gets to know Julio a little bit more. Mm-hmm. You think that, you know, 500 or 478 episodes of the <laughs> podcast in, we know Julio like the back all. of our hand. Not yep. quite. Still a lot. So A lot um, of Colorado. Yeah. Coming. So anyway, keep an eye out for my Nicaragua video. That should be coming some point this month, hopefully. Uh, and hopefully we'll get Lynch out there somewhere crazy. Yeah, that would be uh, that would that would be good. Yeah. I know that would that would be a banger. Send us emails at oopsthepodcast at gmail dot com. Um, we love hearing from you guys, and uh, whatever the topic is, we'll f- we always talk about it. So yep. that's what the show's all about. At not Julio at Oops the Podcast. Uh, thanks for riding with us. Welcome to all the new listeners. It's been fun to kind of bring in a new generation and a new era of Oops. Uh, so. Nice to hang out with all of you. Let us know what's going on. Talk to you soon. Peace.